Hey everyone, Brian Beeler coming to you from storageview.com and today we're taking a look at an interesting combination of products. So you may recognize the venerable Dell PowerEdge R750, we've got that, we've got the PlyOps XDP card and we're going to get into this quite a bit more. And we've got these Solidime QLC drives, these are the 30 terabyte class drives, the P5316. In aggregate, we've combined these to come up with a solution that really leverages the SSDs to their fullest. And there's all sorts of great things about QLC SSDs like the P5316, the capacity being one of those at 30 plus terabytes available. But QLC SSDs specifically want to be written to in a very particular way, not that strange. This one just wants to be written to in 64K blocks. And to do that, sometimes it's a challenge in software to make that happen. And you can use things like software RAID, you can use RAID cards, but they're not the most efficient way to go about handling flash in a lot of use cases. NVMe flash changed the game, QLC changed it again. And now there's a whole big opening for accelerator cards like the PlyOps card to come in. So what does the PlyOps XDP accelerator do? Well, first of all, it's obviously a half height, half length add-in card. So it'll slot in any modern server. We used it with Dell in this case, but they're compatible with uh, just about everything. And it connects over the uh, NVMe bus to get access to the drives in front. And what you end up with is a really efficient RAID architecture and structure that's better than software RAID, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and more efficient than the hardware RAID cards. As we look at the card architecture itself, there's a little SODIMM on board which stands out. Now that's going to be where your writes coalesce coming into the system. You can see the capacitors here where it's backed up. And around the back, there's actually even a little mini M.2 SSD on the back to hang on to your data in the event of an unexpected power loss. So that protects your writes coming into the system. Reads are driven from the SSDs, in our case, the QLC SSDs, in which they're actually really good at delivering when it comes to read performance. But this card also will help manage things like rebuilds of the RAID. If one of these drives were to fail, it will stay up and continue operating while rebuilding. And we looked at all of that as part of our, our performance evaluation with this card. In fact, why don't we have Kevin walk us through some of the key findings in terms of performance and capabilities of the card. So for our performance testing, we used um, RAID 5 for the PLAPS XDP card and then RAID 0 for uh, software RAID, primarily to give software RAID the biggest advantage, even though the PLAPS card still ultimately end up beating it. Um, and uh, we used four drives. Uh, we used a 64K uh, chunk size and we just threw some of our traditional workloads on it. So our 4K random uh, read and write, uh, we used um, 16K random, mixed 4K, 8K, and 16K, and then a large block uh, 64K sequential workload. From our 4K random read and random, uh, random write workloads, we saw 3.6 million IOPS from the software RAID 0 configuration and 2.5 from the PLAPS XDP. Now this is an area where the smallest block size in read is kind of a disadvantage to the uh, PLAPS card. Its, its advantages really come into the uh, larger block sizes, but it still performs pretty well. Now you look at the 4K random write performance though, and you're looking at 135,000 IOPS for uh, software RAID 0 versus 1.2 million IOPS for the uh, PLAPS card. Now that's a huge 932% uh, improvement, and we're going to see uh, those sorts of improvements carry on throughout the uh, additional workloads as the block sizes increase. In our 16K random uh, read and random write workloads, the PLYOPS card is able to lead in both read and write performance. Now for uh, read performance, we saw 1.9 million IOPS from the PLYOPS card versus 1.67 from uh, software RAID 0. And when we look at the uh, write workload, we had uh, 396,000 IOPS versus 130,000 IOPS. Now this, these are both huge improvements versus software RAID with RAID 0 versus RAID 5 through the uh, PLYOPS XDP card. Now as we switch over to our uh, mixed uh, random workloads, we look, at our, uh, we look at a 4K, 8K, and 16K profile. Now in 4K uh, 7030, we had 421,000 uh, IOPS from software RAID 0 versus 2.7 million IOPS from PLYOPS uh, XDP and RAID 5. Now that's a huge improvement just in that area. Even though it had a disadvantage for the pure read workload, when you start looking at a mixed read, uh, read and write workload, huge advantage on the uh, PLYOPS card with uh, QLC flash. 
moving the uh, block size up to uh, 8K, we had 428,000 IOPS on software RAID 0 versus 1.9 million IOPS on the uh, PLAPS uh, XDP. Now lastly, on our 16K random workload, we had uh, 426,000 IOPS on RAID 0 versus 1.1 million IOPS with the uh, PLAPS XDP uh, solution. In our uh, last workload, we look at uh, sequential read and write bandwidth. Now, um, this we're instead of focused on IOPS, we're looking at uh, bandwidth or megabytes per second. And uh, for this area, we had 27,000 uh, megabytes per second or 27 gigabytes per second from software RAID 0 versus 47.9 uh, gigabytes per second on the uh, PLAPS card. Another uh, huge improvement on that versus uh, software. But this, is gonna, this has been carrying through the, uh, a lot of our testing. On the uh, write performance, we had 2.2 gigabytes per second on software RAID 0 versus uh, around 6.3 gigabytes per second on the uh, PLAPS XDP or 283% improvement. Now, while performance uh, during a optimal configuration is great, the, another thing to uh, take into consideration is what well, if a drive fails? What's the rebuild process for that? In our uh, testing, we used a uh, we ejected one drive from our RAID 5 configura uh, configuration and inserted a uh, clean hot spare. In that case, we had around 450 minutes uh, to uh, fully rebuild and repopulate that drive with data, and that was with uh, some workload being applied. So we had around 900 megabytes per, uh, per second of a uh, 8K7030 workload applied in the background. And during that, we still saw a, um, a around a 14 minute per every terabyte uh, rebuild pace. So overall in the end, we're left with a system that saw really great performance. In fact, our RAID 5 performance with parity protection was better than software RAID 0. So out of the gate, we've got a big pickup in, in performance there. And then when we looked at things like degraded states and failing a drive and looking at how the system responded, we were still able to get very good performance while the system was rebuilding and still keeping some parity protection in play. So overall, it's a really neat system. All you have to do is add the card, a little bit of software, works in almost all the flavors of Linux, all the uh, major server vendors. And if there's really anything that's a little bit challenging with the card, it's the top end capacity. So we top out at 128 terabytes per card, only 128. You know, when you're using these 30 terabyte drives though, they do aggregate pretty quickly. If you need more capacity, you can add additional XDP cards to your system to get access to uh, more flash, more overall capacity. And surely that's something that Ply also will be working on in, in future releases to, to make more comprehensive. But overall, it's super simple. We just dropped it in, put the drives in, and we're off and running with a couple Linux commands, no big deal. If you want to look at taking advantage of, you know, we focused on QLC, but TLC SSDs as well, and anything else that comes after, the PlayOps card's definitely worth an evaluation.